You are listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. I'm Elena Paventa, Executive Communication Coach and TEDx Organizer. With each episode, I'll share with you communication tips and ideas from top business leaders to help you excel in your career. Welcome, everyone, to the next episode of Ideas and Leaders podcast. Today, I am speaking with Miles Anderson. He's CEO and co-founder of Bright Local, a technology company with a mission to help marketers become brilliant at local search marketing. Hi, Miles. It's great to have you on Ideas and Leaders. Hi, Elaine. It's very lovely to meet you. Thank you very much for having me on today. So, um, Myas, can you tell us in the beginning uh, your story? How did you start Bright Local, where the idea came from, and uh, how how did you start all this? Yeah, sure. Uh, apologies, I have a couple of dogs, so uh, they're locked away, but if they bark, that's the, uh, that's the noise <laughs> in the background. So, I started Bright Local in uh, 2009. It's the first company uh, I'd sort of started and run. Prior to that, I had worked in a number of sort of large media or sort of technology organizations in the UK. And I found myself at a crossroads in life where I was what I said of mid-30s and wanting to do something for myself. Uh, I actually got made redundant from a previous role. And I found myself not wanting to go back into a workplace where I wasn't in control of my future. I wasn't in control of what I did. Yes, so I started Bright Local in 2009, so we are now close to 13 years old. Prior to starting Bright Local, I'd, um, I'd never had my own business before. Uh, I'd worked in a number of organizations. Most of them were sort of media or technology companies. I was sort of doing some business development. And I hit my mid-30s. I had a couple of children, and I got, she got made redundant from, from a role. And I was very frustrated and disappointed that that had happened to me. And I felt that my career was not on a path that I felt was particularly productive or successful or fulfilling. And I was finding it difficult to find essentially my place in the world. And so I decided that actually rather than take another job opportunity, uh, I was going to do something for myself. I'd always had a desire to test myself in that way to see if I could build and grow a business. And I thought this is the, the right opportunity. And the process of being made redundant had really sort of hurt me um, quite a lot. I felt very um, frustrated, annoyed with myself and very disappointed. I really, with two young children, I thought, you know, what? I want to be a positive role model in their lives. I want to do something that they can look at me and, and, and feel proud about. And so I set about looking for an opportunity to, to, to start a business. I actually founded Bright Local uh, with an ex-colleague called Ed, and he's currently our, our, our CTO. And we realized that we were both in a similar place in life, similar backgrounds, similar ambitions and kind of trajectories. And we felt that we could, we could forge a partnership and do something together. So we came together. We spent probably about six months trying to work out what it is that we wanted to do. We met with lots of different people. We talked to them. We explored businesses by, you know, just trying to get sitting alongside them, seeing what they what they were doing. And the sort of idea for, for, for Bright, Lo Bright Local, which is a business that helps local business of marketeers um, become brilliant at local SEO. Back in 2009, a lot of local businesses were really struggling to understand how to use the Internet to increase their visibility and bring customers to their door. We'd worked on a similar project to that. We understood the pains and the, the troubles and the trials that they were having. We felt that we had the ability to create a platform, a technology platform that would help them. And so that's what we set about doing. We actually started off life a little bit as an agency, so providing marketing services to local businesses. But Ed, who's our CTO's background, is very much in web development and building, um, uh, building applications. And so we very quickly realized that actually that was probably going to be a much stronger commercial model to move forward with rather than a sort of agency model. And so we set about building our own technology platform. Initially, it was very, very small, um, a bit flaky. Uh, we didn't have a huge amount of money, but we didn't have any money right at the start. We tried to get investment from the investment kind of community, but they wouldn't touch us with a barge pole. And I probably don't blame them because we had no track record of running businesses. We had no prototype. We had no sort of seed money to kind of get off the ground. And so we probably weren't a very exciting prospect for them. So we ended up having to do it the hard way. And we both had day jobs for the first two or three years while we were working in the evenings and working weekends to get Bright Local off the ground. Any money we made immediately got reinvested back into the business. We were paying freelancers to do every other job that we weren't sort of physically able to do. And it took us about three years to get to a point where I was able to 
give up my day job and go full time on Bright Local. So that was in around 2012. And since then, we've grown roughly 20% year on year. Our turnover is um, due to be around $13 million this year. We've got 200 team members in the UK, US, um, actually in the Ukraine. We have a big development team in the Ukraine and also in the Philippines. So we spread across uh, four different countries, multiple, multiple different time zones. And we are still an independent bootstrapped organization. We don't have any outside investment, but we maintain our growth through reinvestment of our profits uh, and creating a really strong culture where everyone in the business has the capacity to, to be autonomous, to make decisions and to contribute you know, to, the, to, to the best of their ability. Uh, and yeah, that's where we are today. Wow, that sounds like an amazing story. And uh, I think that many young entrepreneurs or beginners who just start their businesses, they're struggling with uh, taking their business off the ground and, and uh, or struggling with those in those first months or first years. And what do you think was the most important for you and uh, your business partner to actually stay on track and uh, achieve this uh, success that, that you achieve right now? It's important things. I guess it's hard to say what the single most important thing is. I think having the, 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 the belief that you could do it. I did think for many years, actually, I, you know, we had no idea whether it would be successful. And sometimes I looked at the exercise as, as an upskilling of my own skills so that if I ever had to go back into the marketplace, I had a bit more experience and a story that was more compelling than you know, just having worked in inside other uh, other organizations. But when we started to make money and people started to buy our product and they liked it and they got good feedback, that was an amazingly motivating experience, a motivating feedback to get it. Really felt that we were we were onto something here, we we're onto an opportunity, and we just had to and we just had to sort of stay with it. And actually, the more customers we got, the more we could see that we could invest back in the platform. The more viable its future became, the more sort of um, hopeful we were that it would become sort of something something really successful. I think for me, the probably what was the most the be, the best thing I had was having a business partner. Actually, it was having someone in Ed who I could share every up and down with you know, every problem was a was a, was a problem shared and the nice thing about the two of us is we we come from quite similar backgrounds we have similar levels of ambition um he's a bit more risk averse than i am and i'm more of a, a risk taker he's also a, a fantastic technologist and technology leader and that's an area of my skills are not particularly good i'm much more focused on the, on the business side on, on marketing sales and all the kind of operational aspects of the sort of business. And so we had very complementary skills. And so actually finding someone who was quite similar to me with similar similar ambitions, similar desires, but an opposing skill set that when you brought the two together, rounded out all the skills that we need. And someone who actually was quite patient and good natured, who you know we could wrestle with the challenges together in a non-confrontational way, very much realizing that you know both our sex, our successes were intertwined and we needed each other made it actually a really great experience to have because I never felt I was alone I always felt there was someone that I could talk to about what we were kind of going through someone that would always have my back and knew that he knew that I would always have his back and that actually made some of the tough times we had much easier because of because of having each other so that I think is one of the two things that I'm incredibly grateful for and I feel there's a, a huge amount of serendipity in us Kind of coming together you know when we did at the similar points similar points in our in our lives the other one actually is is uh, is my wife sophie who has had to put up with me being a workaholic for 13 years and for working all hours uh, that god has given me uh, for, for much of it she had to put on hold on of her own ambitions to allow me to to fulfill mine uh, and was always unflinchingly supportive in uh, in doing it. even the early days where i remember times one point where we, I went, I'd quit my day job a little bit too early uh, and we hadn't got enough momentum. We didn't have enough money, revenue kind of coming in. And about three or four months into that process, I found myself lying in bed one day, realizing that I had about 300 pounds, which is $500 left in the bank. Two kids, you know, a house, rent, all, all the sort of bills. And I'd found myself basically on the edge of a cliff, almost like I'd slept walked there going, oh my God, what am I going to do tomorrow? I can't continue to do this. We've got no money coming in. I've got no money in the bank. How am I going to get over this over this moment? 
Uh, and Sophie brilliantly, calmly talked me down. Said, "Look, you just you know, you've done it before. You've done the, the the day job alongside Bright Local. Go back and done the other day job. Give it another eighteen months for the business to grow, you know, and then and then, and then come back and do it again, which is what I did. And I managed to get a job fairly quickly. That led to a couple of other opportunities, which again, you know, I, I think luck and serendipity have been a big part of uh, of of our success, particularly getting through the, the particularly kind of hard times." Um, but also having someone who was willing to take a punt on me, uh, you know, as my wife Sophie did, and set aside some of her own dreams and ambitions is something else that's allowed me to go out and do this with a with with sort of full of confidence and conviction. Yeah, it's so important to have to have uh, people who support you, right, and on uh, different. Um stages of your business development and um, what if um, let's say we don't have a business partner or some someone we can rely on um, and we want to, uh, to to hire someone so do you have any uh, tips for how to actually find people who are talented who, who are um, Uh, accountable also for, so who, who would not only yeah. do uh, what we tell them to do but who, who would also um, kind of invest in in uh, in our business and develop our business uh, what is your approach to uh, getting new team members yes and yes not everyone has that has that option not everyone wants to have that option and you know I, don't, I, I just don't think I like being alone So that's probably my probably why I surround myself with uh, with people to to shoulder the burden. But that's not everyone's everyone's path forward. But certainly, you cannot run a business on your own. You can't you can't succeed at any pace when you're having to to hold all the strings uh, within an organization. Yeah. I think if I fast forward to our, our my position now, you know, working as a CEO of a business with 200 people, 13 million turnover. My role now is fundamentally around three things. One, it's around the culture, because I'm, a, I'm very much a, a big believer that, that the way that we can grow our business fast is by having a culture uh, of autonomy, of people taking their own decisions, uh, of people contributing max to, to the max that they, that, they, that they can do. And to do that, you have to have the right people. You have to right, bring in the right people with the right mindset and attitude. And then you have to give them this sort of supportive culture where they can flourish Where they know that it is up to them to make quick decisions. If they make mistakes, that's fine. We just learn from them and try not to try not to uh, to make them again. So the culture is one area I focus on. The second one is is focusing on, on um, uh, the strategy of the business, and the third one is actually focusing on my leadership team. And so, in terms of other people in the organization that I now rely on, I have a, a, a pretty strong leadership team of people that I inherently trust. Uh, they trust me. Uh, and that we support each other a huge amount. And that's taken some time to, to, to understand that was what I needed and how to, to grow and nurture that particular team. But that actually has been probably the greatest accelerator of our business is me recognizing the fact that Ed and I just couldn't do it all. And that I had, we had to bring in other people around us and to share not the, not the burden of tasks, but share the, the responsibility and to multiply the conviction we had to drive the business forward in all areas at one time. So we have a leadership team that looks after marketing, operations, product, finance, customer success, uh, sales, and, and, uh, and, and technology. And we're a very collaborative, collaborative group. We have done uh, extensive amounts of leadership training, because actually a lot of us were quite junior. And you know, before Ed and I had you know, come to Bright Local, the largest team That I had run was two. I think the largest team that Ed had run was maybe three or four. So we had no experience of running an organization uh, of this size. Uh, and all of the people that we also brought in, you know, initially in the early days didn't do, but the people we brought in were people that wanted to be on that journey with us. They had as much passion for what we were trying to do as we did. We may not have had the skills and the experience, but when you're early on, you, you can't, the skills and experience is expensive. To get the people who've got, you know, who are, you know, have got, you know, 10, 15, 20 years of experience, who've done it all before, you know, they, they, those people charge high salaries. And so when you're in the early days, you have to bring in people that have got the, the right character 
and attributes, people who are prepared to get stuck in, people who are gritty, who are prepared to you know, accept the bumps in the road that small businesses have are not going to get shocked by them and want to go to a more comfortable, safe, solid organization, which is, you know, not doesn't have those those sort of ups and downs. And actually those people, you know, are, are cost a little bit less because they don't have the experience, but they're also excited about the journey. So I think a key thing is is recognizing that you can't do it all on your own. And when you're at the point that you can bring in others, do it as quickly as possible. So take that budget, take a loan and bring in others. But when you're looking for them, don't get too hung up about experience, particularly in the early days when experience is relatively expensive, but find people that are, you know, that have a similar passion to you, lots of energy, that want to be challenged and you know, will thrive in that type of environment. Seek them out, take, it, take the time it takes to find these people, to hire them. I would say, don't worry about age. One of the best people I brought in uh, was our, he's actually uh, sadly now left, but he's a, a great sort of friend of mine, who I'll be forever grateful that you found him, it was our head of sales called Matt. And he came in as, I think he was 21 when he came in and we had eight people and he just had so much energy and enthusiasm to sit alongside my and Ed's that he was just a great person to collaborate with. And yeah, we got things wrong. We, he didn't have any, you know, he didn't have any more answers than I did. But he was someone who would give a project, he would go it wholeheartedly, he'd give it his all, he'd do it with incredible kind of passion, conviction uh, and responsibility uh, as well. Um, and so if you find those people, that, that's great. You know? And obviously as businesses grow, the profile of the people that you bring in does change. So actually, this is a pretty great example, Matt decided after seven years with us that he wanted to move on to a different organisation to try and see whether the skill sets that he'd built up here could be applied there with the same success and he wanted to, you know, some different inputs into, into his life. So he left and we uh, have a, a new head of sales now who actually is um, a lot more experienced, maybe sort of 20 plus years experience in, in various sort of industries. He's seen it, done it, tried it, failed, tested it sort of many times over. Um, and actually, he's been able to bring in a, a different level of experience, you know, th to what we really, what we need sort of right now. So actually, as you grow as a business, the type of people that you can a, afford to bring in and the people that you want to bring in at that time will, will absolutely sort of change. To be able to recognize that and appreciate that is, that is great. Um, but I think ultimately, look for people that have lots of energy, who are kind of have a similar level of, of sort of ambition and desire to you something that you can really trust because you're really going to have to trust these people to do the jobs that you you give to them so that you you can step away and focus on on the other areas but i would say don't get too hung up about experience in those early days if you're a different type of business and let's say you're venture backed and you've got lots of money and you want to accelerate very fast then it's a different set of circumstances but that's not the sort of circumstances that i found myself in i think and lots of other businesses won't find themselves you know with lots and lots of money to spend uh, on you know extremely experienced leaders but you don't necessarily need them in the early days yes i agree with you with the uh, lack of experience because i've i have worked with uh, some very young people and sometimes they have so much energy and enthusiasm and uh, they are eager to to work and to work extra hours to achieve something that i think that the sense of achievement is also very important for for them for for young people right now so i think that definitely sometimes it beats experience and talent and and uh, all things but of course if you want if we need someone more experienced leaders than then we need uh, we need to look at the years of experience as well and uh, also um Maya, as you mentioned the um, uh, working extra hours and you mentioned being you know workaholic at certain at a certain point in your career. So what would you recommend to entrepreneurs who are super busy and who work 24 seven? How can they be maybe a little bit more stressed and have a little bit more work-life balance? Good point. I mean, I, my early days, <clears throat> I think I had almost zero work-life balance, if I'm <laughs> really honest. So I'm probably not the best person. But I guess if, if I was to do things over again and do things differently, I think one is stay healthy and get lots of sleep. And those are two things that I didn't do enough of in, in, the, in the first 
two to three years. I was, I'd often, you know, finish my day job and, you know, get, uh, get back home at sort of eight o'clock at night. And I'd work from nine at night till three in the morning. And then I'd get up at seven and go again. So I was often getting four, five hours sleep a night for, you know, months and months on end. And I think it really, really hampered my health, you know, in, in, in that sort of period. So I would say, don't, don't, don't substitute sleep for anything else. Sleep is absolutely crucial. And now I try and if I can, to get eight hours a night because I know it just makes me much fresher and much more focused uh, the next day. Uh, and look after your health. So, you know, um, take some exercise, whether it's just even a walk, just allow yourself to, to, to decompress from the daily stress. It makes your head much clearer, much better able to make better, faster, more well thought through decisions. So those are the two things that I think for me, if I was to do it again, I would focus a lot more on is trying to get sleep a lot more uh, and, and forcing myself to, to take exercise Whereas I felt I can't be doing that because I could put that time into, into more work. Actually, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes a day shifted from work to exercise would have, would have, would have allowed me probably to, to achieve more. Even though I was working less, the, the work time would be more productive. Yeah, so we need to sleep more, to rest more and uh, take care about ourselves and uh, delegate some of the work that... Uh, that we have right after yeah. hours to someone else and look for new team members as you mentioned yeah. right and i think the, the key thing is is if people are saying they're going well i'd love to do that i'd love to be able to to, to delegate and bring people in but I, I i don't have the budget is there's just a, there's a whole universe of freelancers out there who who have who have skills and experience and certain things that, that you don't uh, so make make use of them and even now when i have a team of uh, of 200 people if I, if I need something done on Excel, for example, or if I need a small piece of design work that is for me, not for the business, I might be a presentation I'm putting together, I will go to Fiverr or I will go to Upwork and I will find, and actually I have, because I've done it multiple times, I've got five or six people on those platforms that I know have got really specific skill sets and who I brief through video and go, can you please crunch the numbers on this for me? Or can you please uh, revamp the design on this particular presentation? And you know, what might take might have taken me, you know, two hours, uh, will take me 15 minutes to brief them and they and they go and do it. So there's actually a whole network of, uh, of freelancers out there that you, you can make use of. And if you become quite efficient and effective at briefing them, it actually ends up saving you a huge amount of time. It doesn't really cost cost a lot of money in the process. So for those people who are very much in the very, very early bootstrap phase who need to hold on to, to every penny and, and can, can't bring in other team members, then tap into that freelance market because it saves you a huge amount of time. You regularly get a much better job done because the people who are doing it have got those specific skill sets that you don't. And you can turn things around very, very quickly through that, through that, uh, through the use of that network. Yes, definitely, definitely. I totally agree with you on this. And uh, we need to to let go some of our tasks that take too much time and uh, especially in the beginning when yeah. we have we, we are doing everything so thank you so much miles for all your tips if you were to leave our listeners with a couple of key recommendations on on uh, having a successful business what would it be i'm a big believer in the power of culture as an organization um and i think Sometimes people don't understand you know, how culture can be an enormously accelerating uh, sort of impact on, on, on a business or exactly kind of what culture is. And culture is one of those, it's one of those more hard to describe, hard to pin down elements of business. People can talk about strategy and they can point to a strategy document. They can discuss their, their, their go to market channels and sort of point to those. And when you come to culture, it feels like it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a, you know, an, an amorphous sort of blob that people don't really sort of understand. The way I look at culture and the way I've come to look at it as I've grown the business that I've needed to grow a strong culture because I wanted to have other people around me that shared the burden of responsibility. And because we move in, we're in the IT space, we move very, very quickly. And so I needed people to come in to quickly understand what we were about as an organization <clears throat> and how to make decisions. 
so that when they make decisions, they make it with the full understanding of essentially of how I would make a decision. So I've managed to kind of codify the kind of decision making culture in the business so that everyone else can make decisions. So that me, I will ideally make as few decisions as possible. And that's my bit of a sort of CEO mantra is I want to make as few decisions as possible by empowering others in the business to have the skills, the knowledge and the autonomy to make as many of those decisions. So really think about what, what kind of culture you want to have and then how do you communicate that culture through the organization? And we do it in a few ways. You know, we have a set of beliefs that are a bit like values, but they're very, they're quite prescribed. They're quite detailed and they really talk about, you know, what it's like to work here, how we want to, 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 to treat each other. And that goes right down into sort of how we, how we kind of make decisions. Um, then we use that in the interview process. So we have a sort of you know, a belief slash culture interview. We have uh, daily awards, people who are you know, recognized for various behaviors that align uh, to, to those beliefs. Um, it also takes part in our exit survey. So throughout the whole life cycle of someone joining the business, you know, we really reinforce the kind of culture and beliefs through doing that. And that allows people in the business to feel confident that when they're making decisions, they are doing it with, with the right intentions behind it, driving the business in, in the right direction, the same direction that I would, I would drive the business. And that allows us to move much faster. It means that things don't have to get run up the you know, sort of the hierarchy to get an approval on. And I'd much rather people um, make a decision and then come and say, oh, I've screwed up, I've messed up. And okay, well, don't worry about it. Where did it go wrong? What experiences can we, can we learn and, and, and improve from this? And then let's go again. I just don't want people to come and be tentative about making decisions and needing to get approval and needing to rubber stamp everything and needing everything to be, um, you know, to be overly uh, sort of thought through. I'd much rather, you know, get to a quick decision, make the decision and learn from it as fast as possible. So very much, you know, I think if you want to grow your business and you want to share the burden, do it through culture because actually it becomes a massive, you know, it frees up your time enormously. It's very motivating for those in the business because they're feeling that they're really contributing properly to the success and growth of the business. And that, you know, that breeds confidence. It breeds the desire and the motivation to want to, to work even harder. And that makes your life as a manager, as a leader, as a business owner, a lot easier. So I would say, you know, one thing I would, you know, always talk to people about is, you know, what's your culture? You know, have you expressed your culture clearly to your team? Do they understand how they should act, how they should make decisions? If not, really focus on that because it might take a little bit of time up front, but you get so much benefit because as your business grows, you can't afford to be in every meeting. You don't want to be in every meeting. You can't afford to you know, have your fingerprints on every document and every decision that gets made. But you can do through your culture and making that really clear to everyone in the, in the organization. Yeah, it is so important so that everyone is on the same page and that uh, this everyone can feel the culture of, of an organization. Thank you so much, Miles, for all your tips, uh, for, for everything that you shared with us, for your business story. It is very inspiring and definitely we learned a couple of things uh, today from you. Right. Uh, if our listeners want to contact you to reach out, where, where they can find you and information about uh, your business, about Bright Local? Okay, great. So um, you can email me directly. It's miles at brightlocal.com and miles is about M-Y-L-E-S. Obviously, you can go to brightlocal.com and you can find out everything about not just our business, but also if you're interested in getting into local search marketing and local SEO, we have a, a free academy where you can, you know, you can learn all the skills that you need to become successful at that. We share all our research. You can obviously get in contact with our, with our, our marketing teams and our customer success teams through there. Or you can find me on LinkedIn. Just search for Miles Anderson at Bright Local. Perfect. Thank you so much, Miles, for sharing uh, your story with us today and for being on Ideas and Leaders. Thank you very much. I've loved it. Thank you for listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. Did you enjoy this episode? Let me know that you listened by tagging me in your LinkedIn profile and using a hashtag Ideas and Leaders. See you in the next episode.